Hi Piccolo players. In this video, I'm going to go over the young person's guide to the orchestra. It's got a great, really cute piccolo solo. So I'm gonna play it down once and then go over any advice or practice strategies um, that I have. Okay, so first off, uh, what makes it hard is that, uh, well, it's an entire, it's total solo. I don't think there's a single other thing happening in this moment in the piece. So the issue in this solo, I think, are the accents, which are fine, but in my experience, the conductor always wants more, and you have to be very careful not to overdo it. You're in that middle register, and it can easily crack on you. So like the first accent, honestly, I, I think when I just played it, I didn't even remember the first accent. The first accent I wouldn't really worry about so much. It's your first entrance. It's literally just you, just the piccolo. Make sure it speaks and everything's clean and clear. That's the most important thing, I think. So that everyone feels secure around you too. And the accents are in odd places within the phrasing. So one way to practice this is you can do the phrase and in this way. That's one phrase and try to be light on that D sharp, for example. And then the next phrase after the D sharp. That's kind of an easy accent. It's right on the downbeat and it's a D, which is not likely to crack. The next phrase, you want to avoid doing any kind of feel of a downbeat on the G. That'll give it kind of like a faux accent and you don't want that. That E accent then is weird. So I think rather than worry about the E accent, I mean, you can worry about it a little bit or try to do the E accent, but I think what's help, more helpful is to make sure that G downbeat is not heavy and that will give the illusion that the E has a little bit of an accent. The next measure, the measure before A, these are easy, so you can really do the accent there without too much um, worry about cracking. Again, I would practice the accents in the phrasing that often is not in line with the bar lines. Wherever the accents are, you wanna give the illusion that that is the downbeat. So in other words, I would practice it something like this. something like that where I'm sort of stopping and redoing a downbeat feel wherever the accents are whether they're on the downbeat or not other than that everything is very uh, short crisp and clean sounding so it, it has this fun rhythm to it if you can get that personality to come out as for the piano dynamic I would I wouldn't completely ignore it but I would basically ignore it just you just play it's just you it's just the piccolo all by itself so it's a soloistic piano when you have the pianissimo after A, rehearsal A, what, I wouldn't worry about that too much either, unless it's an audition, and then you have to kind of worry about those details. But the flutes come in right there, so there's a lot of things happening, and it's just you just have to make sure your notes are there and completely accurate. Um, so at A, yup, up, up, just exactly in time, and again, very accurate. Basically, I think the idea of the pianissimo is that you have now, as the solo instrument, kind of faded into the background and the two flutes are now have the, the feature. The accents after A, those just lend itself naturally to the phrasing, I think. So you just, you just play the music at that point. The crescendo right here, be careful not to overblow. You can kind of just <clears throat> have more of a forward motion feel of the phrase rather than because again, you're gonna risk cracking your middle F. I think I'll start one after A here. This is like the second half of the solo. And you can even like move your body like that a little bit and it, it helps the conductor feel reassured that you're doing the crescendo. The main thing, which I, I think I said already, is just to keep it very, very steady and secure. This, you know, this piece, as you probably know already, is a demonstration of the orchestra and all the kind of the organization of the orchestra 
for an audience that was intended initially to be um, for kids. Now, I mean, I taught this in my uh, college classes <laughs> for college kids, but it's a, intended to be um, instructional. And it's a really great piece in that it's a great, great piece for all kinds of reasons. But one of the things that is interesting, it's very English, it's very um, organized and methodical as it goes through. The whole thing starts, um, the whole orchestra plays, the main theme, and then each of the sections of the orchestra, the four sections, I think it starts woodwind section, brass, string section, and then the percussion section have their feature as sections and then it breaks it down per um, instruments within that section then there's a flute and piccolo feature oboe feature clarinet oh i know too much about this piece anyway it goes on down the orchestra and then it ends through the percussion and um section going through all the different instruments in the percussion section and it starts fading away getting very very quiet with just triangle and something else i can't remember and then it all builds back up starting with the piccolo with this uh, with a fugue. Flutes come in somewhere right around A. And then flutes come in and then the oboes. And so everything's built back up exactly in the order in which we started top down. It goes, you know, back up until you get to the full orchestra again. So have fun practicing this cute solo. Just don't overthink it. I think just, uh, just play it down. You're creating a stable foundation for the rest of the orchestra to build upon. So keep that in mind. You just, you just play what's on the page. All right. Have fun. Happy practicing. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. And so you'll be in the loop for future videos such as this future practice guides. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section and I will see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.